Hi there, I'm your host Raman and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we will visit together a historical town called Newport Pagnell. So please don't go anywhere, stay with me and don't forget to subscribe, like and share. Yes, I'm talking about Newport Pagnell. The stone was first mentioned in the Doomsday Book of 1086. The word actually Newport Pagnell is a combination of two different conceptual words, Newport and Pagnell. Newport means new market town and Pagnell came later when the manor of this town has passed into the hands of family called Pagnell. Then it became Newport Pagnell. The beautiful town is situated on the edge of northbound M1, junction between 14 and 15. And for over a thousand years old history, the town has a well combination of old and modern beautiful buildings. Two long rivers run through in this town. There are two rivers in Newport Pagnell. One is the Great Ouse and one is the Oozel come love it. And the Great Ouse is a Celtic name meaning slow moving. Well the river Great Ouse is the fourth longest river in England. It starts in uh, Northamptonshire, runs all the way to the Wash in East Anglia, north of East Anglia. On the bank of river, there is a splendid garden and an eye-catching picnic spot. In summertime, this spot is full of life. Nowadays, we can enter in this town free of cost, but there was the time when people have to pay to enter in this town and the spot called Toll House and it is situated on the North Bridge. Well, the Toll Houses were built in 1810, two of them, mm -hmm. one coming in from the north or one coming in from the south. And before that, uh, an important coach from Manchester tipped over before the bridge was built into the swampy land. And so it is vital to have decent uh, toll houses to go with the decent roads that were being built, the turnpike roads at that time. This building, the Swan Revived, was an important place for the coach build makers and the coach drivers and the passengers to stay. And there were several coach houses in the town at that time. If you visit Newport Pagnell, so don't forget to visit beautiful Paris Church. Whether approaching the town from either north or south, there is a fine view of this cathedral-like church. It stands above the valleys of two rivers, the Great Ouse and the Ouzel or Lovat. I'm talking about St. Peter and St. Paul Church. This parish church is a grade 1 listed building. When Fold Pagnell and his wife Beatrix gave Newport Pagnell Parish Church to the monks at St. Mary's Priory at Tickford in 1100, there was probably a wooden structure on the present site, but it was soon replaced by a stone cruciform building with a central tower. Remember, the splendid length of the nave and roof, both are the great treasures of the church. The roof was found to be badly damaged by the Death Forge Beetle in 1934, 
and had to be rebuilt. Some of the wooden figures sporting the main beam can be identified as apostles. The roof was decorated during 1967 when the interior of the building was cleaned and redecorated. After visit the church, we went to see the oldest iron bridge in the Britain, which is still in use for modern traffic. Nobody can deny the importance of bridges in human life because bridges connect town to town and human to human and sometimes it's a very helpful to across the river or some waterfalls. Tickford Bridge was built in 1810 on St. John Street over the Great River Ouse. It is one of the oldest last iron bridge in the Britain that still carries main road traffic. It is believed to be the oldest iron bridge in the world that is still in constant use and in its original form. If you walk furthermore on the same street towards town, then you can find a splendid building on your left hand side made as a hospital for poor people. Well, after the invasion by the Normans, uh, they built a hospital for poor people. It was called St. John the Evangelist and St. John the Baptist Hospital. And it, it provided shelter, warmth and, and uh, a home for poor people who might otherwise not have had anywhere to live. It was rebuilt a couple of times, uh, especially by Queen Anne, who was James I's wife. After a couple of yards from the hospital, there is another eye-catching spot is called an arcade on the same street. An arcade of shops was built on the site of the town's only cinema, 1912 to 1983, named the Old Electra Cinema, which was opened by the Salmon's Coach Works for its employees. After visiting Arcade, we decided to see a local museum in Newport Bagnall. Hello, my name is Pat Hurst and I've lived in Newport Bagnall all my life. I was born here. Um, I'm a member of the Newport Bagnall Historical Society Committee and we run the museum here in Newport Bagnall in Shandos Hall. One of the interesting things is lace making in Newport Pagnell. Uh, this started obviously in Victorian times and was a cottage industry in that people did it in their own homes mostly, although there were lace schools. Lace making is traditional all around the country and each area has its own different lace. Lace experts could tell you whether a piece of lace was made in Bedfordshire or Buckinghamshire or any other counties in, in England. Even the bobbins, which are the, the needles to do the lace making, are indigenous to different areas of the, the country. And the bobbins are twisted and turned all the way down. Each piece of lace takes an awfully long time to make. A piece of lace this long would take hours. And when you consider that these ladies were making dresses and all sorts of things from lace, it was very time consuming. Lace making was main source of income for the residents of Newport Pagnall. However, there was a dark side of this business, as historian told. In the 1700s, Flemish lace makers came here and the town became one of the finest lace making towns with Olney and Buckingham in the country. Uh, the trouble was uh, lace makers, uh, they must have had very nimble fingers to do their job. They were exploited by their managers. The managers 
made great profits and the lace makers uh, a lot of girls 10, 20 girls worked at a workhouse in Pags Court off Silver Street uh, they worked long hours in poor light and were thoroughly exploited a sign above the door which says uh, any who would not work neither should he eat I think it's a uh, a script from Ecclesiastes. Uh, in the 1870s, that was a long time later, the Education Act was introduced and that stopped rich people exploiting girls. As I said, there were 20 girls working in uh, this particular workhouse, lace making workhouse, while the people who employed them were very rich and lived in really nice houses not far away from where the girls worked. A person cannot live forever on the planet, but their deeds can be remembered forever. The beauty of this town never let the people out from its boundaries. Whoever enters in here, it takes them in the bony arms and makes them comfort. I just love Newport Pagna. 50 years ago, we came to live here. I thought, I'll give it five years. I'm still here 50 years later. Why do we like it? The people. The community. What an interesting place Newport Pagnell is to live. I think it's a privilege to be here, personally. If I take Adam's journey from heaven to earth, then I would to say he was alighted from high heaven to pour the cascade of love and peace. So we are the ambassador of peace and love. <laughs>